and welcome to Studio 5. We've got a great show for you this week. Humanitarian and best-selling author Mitch Album is here. Brian and Katie Torwell are here to share their music, and we also have your Studio 5 first look at the film Moonfall. Let's begin with Mitch Album. His latest book is called The Stranger in the Lifeboat. He visited us here in Studio 5 to talk about the book, as well as his work in Haiti, and so much more. It is a joy that he is this week's Studio 5 sit-down. How did the ship blow up? Are we the only ones left? How long can we survive in this lifeboat? Look, there's someone in the water. As I was reading this book um, to talk to you, I couldn't help but to, I couldn't help but picture um, the scripture where you know Jesus comes to the disciples on the boat and at first they're afraid of him uh, and then he rests and, and a storm comes. Was there any inspiration there from scripture? Oh, I'm sure there is inspiration from all the scripture <laughs> in the Bible. When you write, I, I joke because people ask me this, you know, the premise of the stories that the people who are talking to us understand is that there's this luxury yacht uh, with some of the richest people in the world are on it and it explodes mysteriously out in the middle of the ocean and only 10 people survive, some of whom are the rich guests and some of whom are the staff. They make their way to a life raft and for three days nobody is coming for them. Uh, they're running out of food and water, there's sharks in the water, they're crying out desperately for help and there's no help and all of a sudden they see this body bobbing in the water and they pull it into the boat. It's a young guy, nondescript, you know, very average looking guy, nothing special. They pepper him with questions and he doesn't say anything. And finally, one of the passengers says, well, thank the Lord we found you. And he says, I am the Lord. And it, it sort of takes off from there about, and, and, and you know, they say, well, they don't believe him because he doesn't look like you would imagine the Lord to look. He doesn't have flowing white hair or anything. He's just a, a, a schlubby guy. And, they, and uh, they say, oh, so you're God, well, what are you doing here? And he says, well, haven't you been calling me? And they kind of look at one another and say, okay, so you're here, you're gonna save us? And he says, well, I can only save you if everyone in the boat believes I am who I say I am at the same time. And that begins this odyssey of you know, every day that they're out there longer and things get worse and worse. Um, some of them start to believe, some of them still refuse and think, well, their money's gonna save them or whatever. And I joke around that some people have asked me, well, when you're writing a book where you're putting words in a, God character's mouth. How do you do that? And I say, you do it like this. You write me. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure a lightning bolt doesn't come in and blow up your computer. You know? Who are you? Are you okay? I don't recognize him. He's probably in shock. Well, whoever you are, thank the Lord we found you. What's your, your prayer and hope for this book? It's doing well. What's your prayer and hope for the readers who are receiving it? That it, that it was a healing book for me, uh, and I hope it would be for for others. You know, that's what I would hope would happen as a result of this book. I'd like to talk about um, your your work in Haiti. I've gone to Haiti seven times. The first one following <laughs> the earthquake. If you're just joining us, we are following breaking news out of Haiti, the largest, most powerful earthquake in the region's history, has crippled the country, measuring 7.0. I also went right after the earthquake uh, with a pastor at an orphanage there who thought it had been destroyed in the earthquake. Uh, it hadn't, but it had been overrun. When I came in, I was, I was just so taken with the kids uh, and what they were dealing with. And of course, you know, it was, it was just tragic there. I mean, the streets were chaotic and people were walking around covered in white dust and triage was happening out in the middle of the streets. And you could smell the stench of bodies underneath the rubble that you pass. And, it really never left my heart, and uh, I came back and I organized a group of, uh, you know, I live in Detroit and we do things with our hands out here, and uh, I organized a, a group of uh, carpenters and plumbers and roofers and contractors, and we started to go back trip after trip after trip to build, uh, we built the first toilets that were there, the first showers, the first kitchen, we built a school, and eventually uh, I saw that the, uh, the pastor who was there was quite old and didn't have any money to run the place and he said to me I, I, I don't know what to do I can't run it and one of those moments where you look back and you say hmm, why did I say that I kind of blurted out well I could probably operate this I operate some charities in Detroit and you know how hard could it be 
he basically said, thank you, here it is. And uh, I've, been, I've been running it ever since. That was 2010 and I'm there every month. Uh, I never miss a month. And uh, we have 53 children currently that we raise there. We don't adopt any kids out. Uh, uh, we're called an orphanage because that's how we're classified. But our kids come to us from all over the country from the worst kinds of conditions. Many of them have been abandoned. Uh, their parents have died in earthquakes or hurricanes. Some were left at malnutrition centers and nobody ever came back for them. Many we don't have birth certificates for or names for. You know, we have to sort of start from scratch. But they're raised in a beautiful, loving uh, environment, a Christian environment, a wonderful school. Uh, they go four hours in English and four hours in French, and they're on track to all get college scholarships. Uh, we have lined up for every one of them. In fact, four of them are here in America right now already in college. And then they're going to return to the orphanage when they finish their college studies, work there for two years with whatever they learned to give back, and then go and hopefully make Haiti a better country. We can do more, and with your help, we will. Again, Mitch's latest book is called The Stranger in the Lifeboat, and as you can hear, it is loaded with messages for us all. Still ahead. Two voices from Jesus Culture Music. What's your contribution? You guys are going to be performing what? We're sitting down with Brian and Katie Torwalt. Behold the world, our King is He Welcome back to Studio 5. The holidays may be gone, but we've been enjoying sharing with you performers from this year's Chosen Christmas Special. And this week, Brian and Katie Tarwalt are here to share their music. They've been a part of the Jesus Culture music label since 2010. Take a listen at the great work from the singers and songwriters who are also husband and wife. At the edge of time, foundation. What does it feel like knowing this series is so beloved? Uh, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're one of the ones that love it so much. We got into it a ton over 2020, and I think for us, the opportunity to just come be part of the Christmas special just felt like such an honor and such a privilege that we were like, yeah, absolutely, let's make it happen. Everything has been done so well, and has really been revelatory for us for this last year. What do you think it is about this series? I think there's something about it that that is a different perspective on what it could have been like to meet Jesus and how it would truly impact you as a human being in the middle of your normal life that you're leading and everything you've ever known up until that point changes. Um, I think that's something that really struck me from the very first episode, seeing somebody met by Jesus the person in the flesh and how immediately everything changed. Do you remember how you found it? Uh, a handful of friends, just church friends or some of our community, they were just like, yeah, check this out. And it took us a little while, but when we first watched the first episode, we were like, oh, what, what were we waiting for? <laughs> Luckily, we had a couple piled up then. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, I think Because I think the first night we binged probably four episodes yeah, that we started it. We were like, oh my goodness. What's your contribution? You guys are gonna be performing what? We are, for the finale, we're kind of a group effort, all singing uh, Joy, Joy to the World. And then we are also doing um, a song that we wrote with a friend in Nashville a few, a few years ago called Emmanuel, God with us forever. He It's been a couple years since we wrote it, but it really is, it's sort of a depiction, it's a story from the foundations of the earth mm -hmm. and what it looked like knowing Jesus was going to be born and die for us and, and him knowing that he was choosing that for us. Yeah. And so, and then now as we live with him forever and we have access to him, how that impacts us and how we get to live and worship from that place. Savior of the world. Is this holiday season different than 
all the others we've experienced or you've experienced in light of where we are in the world right now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think we're in a different spot. Um, I think for the first time that I've, in my lifetime, we're, there's just so many firsts taking place. Yeah. And we still have, we can still pull on the wisdom from generations before us. And we're really close to our families and our parents. Yeah. And we look so much for wisdom through experience of people that have done what we've done. Yeah. But there is a certain understanding right now that we are reliant upon Jesus yeah. for everything. And there's so many, there's so many unknowns, there's so many firsts, like I said, and um, knowing that we, that our highs and lows in every aspect of our life is cared for and thought about, and we can entrust in the hands of Jesus. And it's just been never, it's, I've never lived yeah. through anything where it's been so um, apparent that that's going to be a daily choice for us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I think there's just been over the last, you know, couple of years with mm -hmm. everything, it's, you know, a pulling in with you know your family and, and your close friends and, and I think sometimes you know the holiday seasons I think there is you feel that that closeness that much more and I think um, you know that, that feels special in a different way and I think we're maybe more aware of that than I think we have been in, in the past you know being less busy the last couple of years of just like okay being more intentional about certain things and, so, yeah. A clarity yeah. about what's truly like important. latest work from Brian and Katie Torwalt is called Wouldn't It Be Like You? And that's available wherever you get your music. With that, it is now time to share this week's story in pictures. Here's your Studio 5 snapshot. We're extending prayers of comfort for award-winning actress Regina King and family following news of her son's suicidal death. 26-year-old Ian Alexander Jr. was a musician and DJ. King posted, our family is devastated at the deepest level by the loss of Ian. He is such a bright light who cared so deeply about the happiness of others. Our family asked for respectful consideration during this private time. Thank you. King and Ian were often spotted together on Hollywood red carpets and on the sidelines of basketball games. This look at those moments are this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Just moments away. I've made a shocking discovery. I need you to get me in touch with NASA immediately. Well, NASA and I aren't really on speaking terms these days. Well, that'll change. A Studio 5 first look at Moonfall. My character um, is there because she's an expert navigationist, so she has to be the one to guide the mission and make sure we get where we're going. With its award-winning cast and creators. There's no need to panic. No, I'm crazy! Why are they lying about all this? It's too late to stop. Welcome back to Studio 5. Imagine an unknown force knocking the moon out of its orbit, sending it on a collision course with Earth. That drama unfolds in the new film, Moonfall. We have your Studio 5 first look. I've made a shocking discovery. I need you to get me in touch with NASA immediately. Well, NASA and I aren't really on speaking terms these days. Well, that'll change. My initial impressions when I first read the script for Moonfall was that, oh my gosh, this is going to be a huge endeavor. There's no need to panic. And I just thought, how is this going to happen? Why are they lying about all this? It's too late to stop. I think one of the reasons I really wanted to do Moonfall was because it related to the odd times in which we find ourselves living in with this COVID pandemic. You knew all this was happening before NASA. You are the unidentified source? Oh, yes. Because the pandemic is so much, I think, a part of our everyday life right now, a movie like this sort of resonated with me in a, in a different way. I thought it would be more relatable now than ever before. We're dealing with an intelligent entity. We're planning a mission to attack this thing. 
I'm asking you for your help. Say yes, Brian. The strange thing about this film is that we've almost shot everything in a room. Like we're in one room where we've shot car chase scenes, homes, workplaces. These incredibly intricate sets get built. Along with the thanks of the entire country. We know all too well that it's gonna be more vivid, more alive, more real than we can even imagine. But we ha we're forced to use our imagination. Action. <clears throat> It for sure is a much different uh, feel. Maintain separated. All these things that we use to try to pull this off, it's, uh, it, it can be pretty difficult. <laughs> Turn around, he's actually floating. <laughs> That's the job on movies like this. It's, it's a lot of really make-believe. If the moon really is what you think it is, suit up. It's a relatively simple idea. Uh, the moon is falling to Earth, so we have to figure out what it is and how to stop it. On We're underwater, guys! Uh, that's crazy. What's happening is the moon is threatening to crash into Earth, and when it does that, before it gets there, it'll break into a billion, trillion little pieces that will all come crashing onto the Earth and will pretty much kill everyone. So, you know, they've got a big problem. There's some sort of alien force at work, and it goes against everything that science believes. So you have the battle of science and metaphysics and what is possible. There's something really strange going on with the moon. What's the plan? Save the moon, save Earth. It's left up to the astronauts who have an experience, me being one of them, that many 15 years ago uh, was up there and saw something crazy extraterrestrial. There is a theory out there that the moon might be a hollow constructed object. Something is happening that has caused the moon to move out of its orbit and start descending onto Earth. And there's a ticking clock on it. We better do something fast or we're going to crash down! I think we should never have come! Let's close the other booster and see if the moon can pull us the rest of the way. Casey, can we do it? We are all kind of anti-heroes. I don't think any one of us want to be there, but yet we have to be there. Go for SRV separation. Completed! When you like study disaster movies, you realize uh, normal people have to become superheroes. And now, it's too late to stop. Humans and the human spirit, you know, don't give up so quickly. In breaking news, the governor has just ordered the mass evacuation of the entire West Coast. Yes. Moving to higher ground is the only possible chance of surviving. Stay awake, my brothers and sisters! Humans have this amazing quality to, to cling on to hope. This planet has suffered five extinctions. This is going to be the sixth. We're kind of chosen ones. That might be the greatest sentence anyone's ever said. They, they figure out how to work out their problems while saving the world. Our place here is worth saving. People, people are good at, at heart. I, I always like to kind of think a movie has to kind of tap into problems of our time. In times like ours, where our existence is actually a little bit challenged, people want to see the human spirit prevailing over an insurmountable challenge. Ray, what are you doing? I'll find itself! I like when you can use a movie, even a big, splashy popcorn movie, to at least just drop something into the conversation. <laughs> I, I, I think that's really fascinating.
Moonfall is in theaters next week. That is Friday, February 4th. Welcome back to Studio 5. We love sharing music with you. In fact, it's playing all the time as we're putting this show together. And this week's soundtrack, Yeba makes a return with October Sky. Till now, I always go. On that musical note, it is just about time to say goodbye. We want to return right now to Mitch Album for a final word. Do you think that we walk around and often miss God's presence? All the time. All the time. There's a moment where uh, one of the passengers asks this God character, why do people die? You know, and one of the passengers is just crying because his wife died. And this God character says, well, why is it that when people die on this earth, the question is always, why did God take them? Why isn't the question, why did God give them to us? What did we do to deserve their love or their sweetness or their, their memories? Did you have moments like that with your wife? I think we go, we go every day without realizing the presence of God, because if we did, we would be saying thank you every day. Mitch Album, thank you. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you, and then please come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.